Hey guys, Claire here, and in today's video, we're going to talk about all things Harry and Meghan. There's a latest book by another royal commentator, and of course, it's not about Harry and Meghan, but the press about it is about Harry and Meghan, because, well, that's what they do. Now, this particular story from the mirror just says something that the vast majority of us already know. William and Kate were petty and jealous about the British public's love for Meghan Markle. At first, public reaction to Meghan was overwhelmingly positive, with the new kids on the block hogging most of the headlines, to the point that William and Catherine may have unconsciously raised their game. There were whispers, pettiness, and even jealousy. William, who expected to be treated with deference due to his place in the succession, was put out when Meghan and Harry slotted in a morning engagement in Cardiff in January 2018 that clashed with one of his. Competitive by nature, even when it comes to media coverage, he chose that same afternoon to debut a new and dramatic buzz cut during a visit to a London hospital. I don't recall any new and dramatic changes to his appearance or hair. Okay. Some members of Charles's household were amused that William felt so affronted. After all, the prince rarely showed much deference to his father. They were jealous. They're petty. They still are. Still trying to have this one-sided competition with Harry and Meghan. We know this. William has had this ongoing rivalry with his younger brother, who, who is seen more as the charismatic and fun one. And then you have Kate, who's never really had competition when it comes to the other royal ladies. I mean, nobody really pays that much attention to Zara. She's not a working royal. Beatrice and Eugenie usually get bad press about their looks and fashion, which is something that Kate, like, that's what she's about, right? Wearing pretty dresses, smile, look pretty. Pretty princess. Then you have Sophie, and let's be real, most people don't know who Sophie is. People didn't even recognize William, a tall, balding man running around in Central Park of New York City. No one's gonna recognize Sophie. And then there's Camilla, and even though she is now the consort, people don't really like her. Who recognize her? They don't like her. So again, no competition until Meghan came onto the scene. And Kate was a mean girl from day one. Being mad about Easter presents, making Meghan cry, and being a bridezilla in Meghan's wedding. Then she taught that Meghan wanted her fashion contacts. I mean, Kate has been a mean girl from day one, and she still is. Going through this health crisis, and we're still hearing how walking besides Meghan during that walkabout for Queen Elizabeth's memorial was the hardest thing she's ever had to do. Like, are you serious? But every time I think about her, thinking that Meghan wanted her fashion contacts. And Kate, who is known, or was known before Meghan came onto the scene for her love of coat jackets and cosplaying Diana, dared to think that Meghan needed her fashion contacts. When there's a slew of other women of European royalty who emulate Meghan's fashion. Just this week, there were articles about Queen Maxima channeling Meghan Markle's vibes at the Paris Olympics. And they're comparing that brown pantsuit to the pink one that Meghan wore to that basketball game. Remember, we saw Crown Princess Victoria wore that beautiful cape dress to the Jordan Royal Wedding. We saw Princess Elizabeth copying Meghan's dress, having a shorter hot pink version of it. There's the article about the Queen of Spain wearing the same sandals that Meghan war to Nigeria. So yeah, Meghan didn't need her fashion contacts. The only thing Meghan wanted or expected of Kate was a bit of kindness, of common courtesy that we all showed to each other each and every day. But that was too much for Kate. And said she decided to be mean, to find fault, to try to belittle and sabotage this woman's entry into that family. Other European royal women wear the stuff that Meghan wears because they like it, because she has her own style. And the thing I love about Meghan, enjoy watching her dress beautifully and look beautiful, but she's more than just fashion. She uses her voice and her position to give back, to engage in philanthropic work that makes a difference. Love that. I really do take seriously the responsibility put in front of me from the moment I had more of a high profile and young women 
were looking towards me, both as my character on screen and in my personal life, as a role model. And I think it's a missed opportunity if I'm not doing something to show them how you want to move in the world. Now, Prince Harry and his lawyers are still coming for <laughs> Will Lewis and Rebecca Brooks and, of course, Rupert Murdoch. This week, we saw an email which was released by the High Court in London sent by Rupert Murdoch's IT boss to the Sun boss, Rebecca Brooks, and Will Lewis, which allegedly triggered the deletion of 30 million emails. So yeah, this fight is just beginning. And it looks like it's going to be a very dirty and long one. Now, we just talked about the pettiness and jealousy of William and Kate when Harry and Meghan got together and just became a powerhouse in the House of Windsor. I always think to myself, I know some people think, oh, it, it would be so great that they went back and Harry can use his influence within the family to be seen. And because people miss seeing them on those royal tours. They miss seeing them on the balcony. They make things interesting and fun. But for me, I always think just how miserable it would be for Harry and Meghan to be stuck there, living a life on the whims of a Prince William and then a future King William. If he's always been this petty, stressed out and pissed off because Harry got to wear a specific uniform for his wedding or Harry got to get married with a beard, like really stupid, petty, idiotic, childish stuff. Could you imagine a Prince William with the assets that he has at his disposal since the death of Queen Elizabeth. Could you imagine a King William? Could you imagine the hell Meghan would have had to go through during this time where Kate was incognito or the time when she was getting all this bad press about that fake Photoshop scandal? Undoubtedly, the palace would have thrown Meghan to the wolves and not just Meghan. I theorized that they would have used Archie and Lily to distract because that's what they've been doing. They did that to Harry when he was a child. They're doing that to Meghan. And they would have used Harry and Meghan's children. The palace, the press, the royal fans would have made the Sussexes' life a living nightmare. And William would have been happy to throw them to the wolves. And you see his pettiness with the recent firing of Camilla's family member. <laughs> Now, am I losing sleep over that woman getting fired? No, honestly, I think they all deserve each other. But for me, I always think Harry and Meghan did the right thing. They got out at the perfect time where they had this uh, year or two year mark when the world sort of shut down to figure things out, embark on a brand new chapter in their lives. Someone's getting a cut from the royal payroll and guess who's doing the cutting? Prince William. This is Queen Camilla's sister, Annabelle Elliot, and she's being cut off of the royal payroll after serving for two decades. King Charles hired his sister-in-law after marrying Camilla back in 2005. She's been paid hundreds of thousands of dollars. This has no reflection on her work. It's just, they gotta make some cuts. She updated and decorated the duchy holiday cottage portfolio. And now that everybody's learned from her, her services are pretty much no longer needed. As it relates to King Charles, this week we've seen the resurgence of some of these articles saying that Harry said that his wife and children would not be coming to the UK because of safety concerns. That means that poor, poor Grampy Charles is never going to get to see his grandchildren. Grampy Charles, who is a billionaire and flies to all different parts around the world on the taxpayer's expense, couldn't make his way to California to see those children or couldn't put himself out to provide the proper security to see his grandchildren. Boy, bye. And we've also seen articles about Charles's lack of emotion when it comes to Princess Diana. I don't know, I, I feel like we're seeing negative sort of articles about people within the House of Windsor sort of kind of creep back into some of the tabloids slow and steady. Now, of course, we have the butt kissing ones because, you know, they need to have access to the royals. But the less that Harry and Meghan give them, the more you see them sort of feeding the public not so great articles about the Windsors. A few months after the death of Princess Diana, King Charles wrote to a friend explaining his grief and trauma about the death of a loved one. But this letter, believe it or not, is not even about Diana, it's about somebody else. 
the madness continues. This guy had just lost the mother of his children in an absolutely horrific car accident. Yet months later, he's not mentioning that. He's not writing to anybody explaining his level of despair, grief, frustration at the death of, you know, his child's mum. He's writing about the death of somebody else. Seriously, did he actually ever love Diana at all? Did he have any emotion or feelings for him? The other point for her, sorry, the other point I'd make, and this isn't the first, I've got about three videos to do. The knives are out for the royal family from the press. I mean, this just makes Charles look like some cold, uncaring, detached, unemotional, privileged person. You guys remember Hugh Edwards, the ex-BBC presenter that was apparently sickened by Harry and Meghan's Oprah interview. This week he was charged, not just accused, but charged with some very problematic things. And I'm just thinking, why is it that a vast majority of these, these presenters and royal commentators who happily engaged in the Harry and Meghan bashing brigade you look into the insides of their lives. Some very problematic accusations. What is it about the makeup of the media landscape within the UK, particularly for the tabloids, but this one here was BBC. I hold the BBC to a higher standard than the tabloids. <laughs> what is it about these media landscapes that seem to attract the very worst sort of people? Well, I guess another one bites the dust. Breaking news. Hugh Edwards has been charged. The offenses took place between 2020 and 2022. He was arrested last year and is waiting for trial. Now let's talk about this for a second. This whole week, whilst the Manchester airport incident has been going, and we've all been reporting on what's been happening in the comments, are saying things like, we need to stop the boats coming in because these Muslims or all charities, you know, along them line. Now let's talk about Hugh Edwards for a second. Hugh Edwards, the man that you guys, yeah, and I'm, you know exactly who I'm talking to. Hugh Edwards, the man that you guys, when the queen died and he gave that emotional speech, whatever, many were jumping on their seat saying, Hugh Edwards deserves a knighthood. Hugh Edwards deserves a knighthood. And look now. The very man that you were all screaming to be called Sir is now charged. You call it what you want. So yeah, this came up on the news yesterday. Madness, isn't it? It's not really that surprising, I can't lie. I guarantee you, right, if you did a deep search into Schofield's phone, you'd probably find the same amount of images. Or maybe even more. It's not a great look for the Welsh people, I can't lie on that one. Um, we don't really get represented in the media as much, so... Yeah, whew. What on earth? Sorry? Do you know what the worst thing about this is? Is that he could literally get six months in prison or a fine. That's what they're going to give him. What is wrong with this country? It's just the system is bizarre. And we also just have a look at the worst bit, having six category A images. Six months or a fine? Honestly, this is just... I don't even want to look at the comments on some of these articles because you just know half of the British public will have some sort of defence on this man. She can't hack it. Just get me off. Whatever this is, get me off. And I am willing to bet that the very same people that would request grace and compassion shown towards this man are the very same sort of people who refuse to offer the same for Duchess Meghan. This man has been charged with very serious accusations. What has Meghan done to deserve the abuse that's directed at her that has been since the announcement of her relationship with Harry? Fell in love with Harry, married him, attempted to try her best to fit into that family, and just live her life. We're told that she's a bully. Okay, how so? She sent emails in the morning. We're told that she is a troublemaker and disruptive. How so? 
She wore an off-the-shoulder dress, even though many other royal women do the same. She wore dark nail polish. Uh, other royal women did the same as well. She closed her car door. <laughs> she ate avocado toast. Insanity. Now, of course, we recently saw Meghan at the Hamptons for the G9 Summit, and a lot of eagled-eyed royal sleuths noticed that Nacho and his wife, or their family in general, is at the Hamptons. So it's very likely that Harry probably was there and they linked up, probably had a good old double date. What I love about Nacho and Delfina is just how unapologetically they support Harry and Meghan. Good friends are hard to find. You're lucky when you have them. Because people are saying, how dare he go and play after Meghan gave birth so soon. Right. How dare that guy, you know, tells a father who loves his child and is leaving her house for 24 hours to go get, raise money for thousands of vulnerable children. How dare he said something like that, right? It's, it bothers me how these guys change the narrative of the thing. Mm -hmm. And if you, don't, if you don't pay attention and you don't respond, you know... If you uh, don't call him on yeah, it. Yeah, strongly. Then that's, that's the story or in your news thing. And then you read, oh, this guy left his house. How dare him? And, and that's what stays in your head, right? Right. You receive the information. It's edited in a way. Right. And you process it that way. Um, very discreet about your friendship with them. The fact that you chose to speak up about speak it, out, I think, yeah. speaks volumes about how strongly you feel about it. It, it caught my attention because I know how guarded you are about them. Very. And, and I thought that this was important because I think that they are being misinterpreted in so many different ways and it it bothers me a lot no yeah. one in england cares about cares, the royal family yeah. what's up with kate is she alive i couldn't tell you <laughs> she's sick but yeah. no one no one fucking so knows. do you think the royal family is like losing their influence on culture yeah i think they've got like 50 years tops when it's stuff like the royal wedding and like the jubilee and all this kind of stuff yeah most of the people there are american that's english people I, we really don't care that's what really. i was going to ask you like is it valuable just to hold on to for tourism tourism 100 yes. percent. and to round it out let's end this video on a funny note an oldie but goodie from comedian Matt Green. I think everyone in the UK should boycott Netflix. I certainly will be once I finish The Crown and Emily in Paris. I was sitting there just in my underwear. I was literally boiling with rage, watching two young people laughing and enjoying each other's company. That's not what marriage is about. And I should know, I've had three. Apparently they just want to be happy. Well, I'm sorry, this is the United Kingdom. That's just not how we do things. It's absolutely appalling that Harry and Meghan are forcing the press to write about them all of the time. We don't want to, no, they make us. It's a form of bullying, really. Yeah, in many ways, the real victims are the press. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there are so many other things we want to be writing about, but no, we have to write about them. They're so selfish. Race has nothing to do with it. I didn't even know she wasn't white, you know, but I have to say the first time I saw her, I did think, hmm, this one's going to be trouble. You know, I could just tell there was something about her, you know, she was different. You know, it's got nothing to do with race. No, um, you know, she was American. You know, I could tell just by looking at her from a distance. Look, if she can't respect our sacred, ancient tradition of curtsying to an old woman because of which family she is from, then I'm sorry, I think she maybe deserves everything she gets. White people take royalty very seriously. We know our place and we never joke about it. That's our culture. And if you can't respect that, then you're being racist. I've seen some people claiming that Meghan was being self-deprecating and showing a sense of humour about the royal family. <laughs> I'm sorry, self-deprecating and a sense of humour? Where do you think you are? Germany? We never make jokes about the royal family. Even the actual Meghan seems to think that the press were out to destroy her. It's ridiculous. I barely even think about her. She's just irrelevant. And that's something I've made clear in all three of the books I've written about her and in my daily Meg blog. I agree with that MP. We should strip them of their titles and strip them of their money uh, and actually just strip them completely, you know. I knew Princess Diana. Over many years, I shouted literally dozens of words at Princess Diana. And I'll tell you something for a fact. Meghan is no Princess Diana. I don't fancy her for a start. She's not even blonde. In the end, the best plan is simply to ignore them and hopefully they'll just go away. Now, if you'll excuse me, a woman who once did Meghan's nails has just tweeted that she has weird fingers, so I need to write a thousand words on that before lunch. Why won't they leave me alone? Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, hit that notification bell.